Hi and welcome to 3D Print Tech Design. My name is Anton Monson and today we are reviewing the J J Jaguar, Jaguar, JG, no, ja Jago, JG Aurora. JG Aurora A5S. Now that was easy. <laughs> This is a mostly pre-assembled 3D printer. It comes in two parts. It's basically an i3 clone design, but it has some extra framework and some extra plates around it to make it pop a little bit. And I really enjoy that. It makes it look a bit more like a designer's 3D printer rather than an engineer's one. I like that. All right, so before we actually check out the specs, I just want to mention that this comes in a pretty big flat box. So it's basically this, this whole frame is in one part and the bottom side is in one part. And you basically have six, or was it eight? So you only have a few screws to combine the two sections. And it's super nice that you all, only, all you have to do is to raise the frame up, put in this part and then you're ready to go. All you have to do then is plug in the cable on the side, load some filament and you're ready to go. All right, so let's check out some specs. All right, so when you actually get this machine, you're presented with a small box of accessories. You also have a guide that shows you how to, unfortunately, in the old version of Cura, set up this machine. In the new Cura version 4.6 that I've been using, this machine should come as a preset, so you don't have to think about configuring it. So all you have to do in Cura is more or less configure the materials that you'll be using. And this is not really up to the manufacturer, but there are some profiles. I've been using a few different profiles to kind of fine tune my material settings. Uh, for the types of materials I've been using. But other than that, you're basically set to start printing. Speaking of printing, as mentioned in the specs, this machine has a heated bed, but it also has a PTFE lined extruder. So you'll be running lower temperatures, around 245 to 50, even if it says 260. That's just to minimize the wear on the PTFE tube. Therefore, you'll be running mostly PLA, CPE or PTG, and similar materials. So of course you can run ABS, but that's not really something that I would recommend since it's not enclosed and you don't have any filtration. TPU, like these tires that I'll talk about a little bit later, um, it's possible, but it's definitely not something you should buy this machine for. Um, it has a Bowden extruder, it's not designed for TPU. I had some success with the harder ones, so like 60, 65 uh, on the D scale of shore scale. So when you're actually printing, uh, if you jump over to the onboard interface, it's clear that it's not a super premium machine. It's, um, you get the features that you need, but that's basically it. Sure, you get color icons and the user interface is pretty okay. But there are some logical flaws, especially when it's a Bowden extruder. So loading filaments or unloading filaments is really annoying because uh, when you set it up, you basically click on change material and it will heat it up and um, yeah, then you can feed material, but there's no way to really fine control that. So then you have to go over to the motors menu, which is a different menu if you want to extrude like a little bit extra in case you weren't fast enough to take the whole procedure where the filament loads. And by the way, you can stop that procedure. So if you have loaded, let's say, what's that? Like a half meter of filament. If you try to push it again to load another half meter filament, you can't stop that process. It's gonna over extrude or just try to push out way too much filament. So if you wanna fine control that, you have to go over to the motor menu and do it manually, but you also have to heat the extruder. So you have to go to the preheating menu first then set up the heating, go over to the motors. Yeah, you see what I'm, I'm meaning. There's no way of, like, it's simple things that you can fix with a custom firmware, for example, but it's annoying. It takes extra time and it's something you do quite often loading filaments. But I mean, other than that, it's not terrible, but it's just not optimized. So for example, there's no bed leveling, so you have to do that yourself from the menu as well, which is fairly easy. It has a five point leveling system. So it basically goes to five locations. You have to turn the screws yourself and you have to use a paper to level it. Nothing difficult, but you have to do it yourself. 
So during printing, you can of course pause and you can stop the print, uh, but you can also fine tune the temperatures and the fan, which is very nice. You can also fine tune the printing speed down to single percentage values, which is very nice if you want to kind of optimize and just get that. I've had other printers that you can't do anything with the speed or it's like 2x the speed or half the speed. However, you can change the flow, which is something that I would like to do. At least you can't do it on the stock firmware. All right, so to actually review the performance of this machine, I wanted to actually do a real project. Um, usually I do like more synthetic tests to make sure that all the different features work, but I thought that, hey, I need to do some real printing. So I went and downloaded the OpenRC tractor designed by Makeit, and yeah, that's what I did. I made it. <laughs> Almost everything is printed on this machine. The tires, the TPU was a bit too difficult. Um, could like print the small ones, but it's not something that I would really recommend buying this machine for. I had a lot of work to get this done. So I actually printed the, the TPU tires in a different printer. But other than that, everything is printed with it. It's not completely done. I kind of have to get this movie made before Christmas because then I'm I'm on holiday. So yeah, it's uh, <laughs> most parts are done, but it's not 100% complete. Yeah, it, it's a good test for this machine. It's different parts. Some are like in really high quality, some are in a bit lower quality to test speeds, feeds and all that kind of stuff. So some parts are like 20 hours prints and some are like two hours or even one hour prints. And yeah, I have to say the result looks really good. So let's have a closer look at some of the parts. Starting with the biggest print first, this one was probably around 14 hours. Uh, the print looks good. You can see on the underside we have some uh, overhang, but it looks good. This part here use some support, you can see the residue from the supports, but other than that it looks nice. The green parts here are really beautiful, look at this shine from the reflective surface. This was towards the build surface. But you can see on the sides you do have some smaller minor issues with ghosting and small layer vibrations. This is the TPU that I managed to do, uh, it took a long time so I don't recommend TPU. These sides are really nice, they could um, have some use of ironing, but I haven't really tried that a lot in Cura yet. This is a tiny part, I think this was 0.05mm layer heights. For big TPUs I would not recommend this printer. So yeah, it's kind of clear that Bowden extruders are a bit more work when it comes to retractions and stringing, so that's just something you have to think about when you have a Bowden extruder. That so if you're going to use different types of materials, you might have to fine tune the different manufacturers to get every material to perform as it could. I also printed quite a few of the PET and CPE parts, though I have unfortunately given a few of those away during Christmas. Uh, but basically that works really well as well. Uh, as with any PETG or co-polyester prints, retraction and stringing is something that you have to fine tune. And something that I, I never really got to be perfect, but I got to be good enough for, for what it is. So, for example, flexible parts uh, in stronger materials works really well, especially if you want to replace ABS printing. Speaking of ABS printing, I really don't want to recommend printing that, so I'm actually not really going to test that going forward. Maybe if, if a machine is like made to print ABS. Uh, ABS is the same temperatures as most materials, the only issue is the heating. So the, the plate needs to go up to 100 degrees, something that it can do at least as far as I can test, but I really don't want to uh, put out all the fumes in the apartment. So I printed a small test, you can see it here, ABS, it, it works. Of course there are some warping, as is expected with ABS. So yeah, overall my time printing of this machine, which is quite a few hours to get all these parts done, has been super nice. It's been more or less flawless. Well, there were one issue with one of the fans. So the static fan for the extruder, the cool, not the part cooling one, but the, the, the extruder cooler, I had some bearing that were broken. It was probably my fault because I stored this machine a bit weird when we were moving uh, from the apartment to this house. So it could have been my fault, could have been from the manufacturer, but I actually made a separate video how to repair fans that sound like that. You can check it out in, I guess, this corner somewhere. Um, if you wanna do that, basically it's you're, you're oily, oiling the fan. So yeah, other than that, it's been doing well. As I mentioned about the firmware, uh, you can actually run a community firmware which allows you to reconnect this machine with Octoprint, for example. So right now with the original firmware, that is unfortunately not possible. It's kind of up to you if you want to experiment with that, but for my video about the Octoprint system, 
Um, I reloaded this machine with a firmware, super simple, one, one file on the SD card and it's all done. Uh, but then it worked great. That firmware was very capable, but it was less user friendly and actually some annoying things with it as well. You can of course switch in between depending on what kind of user you are. But that, that was super easy to get Octoprint to work. Okay, time for a conclusion. So, um, I've had a great experience with this machine. Um, to be honest, it, it's been working as intended, minus the little flaw with the fan. I think this machine is a great addition for someone who has been introduced to 3D printing. For example, if you've had a class of 3D printing in school, or maybe you got introduced by some friends that have 3D printers, I think this is a great machine because it's easy enough to be a beginner's machine, but it's not difficult enough that it's like a machine that you have to modify, you have to build new features or add features. You can do it since it's open and all that, but it's not really made for that. It's made for someone, I suppose, that has a little bit more experience than nothing, but still not like a super pro user that needs to be able to print exactly all different kinds of materials. So it, it's a reliable and stable 3D printer. It is a few bucks more expensive than the cheapest one, but that actually shows in the parts, except for the fan, of course. But you can kind of feel it in the parts that it feels reliable. All the cables are sure there could be a cable tie extra here, but things are actually kind of well built. It's, it's not super premium, but it, it, it is a small distance from the cheapest ones but it actually brings something. So yeah, I can absolutely recommend this machine. This machine is somewhere in the middle. It's, it's in a good way. It, it's what we like to say in Sweden, it's lagom. It's a positive way of saying it has what you need. It doesn't do too much. It's, uh, it's lagom. And I think I'm gonna leave it with that. It's, it's lagom, I, I like it. And hopefully you like this video and you want to like this video. <laughs> And yeah, it's the last video for 2020. Wow, what a year. Hopefully I'll see you guys on the other side. 2021 is gonna be exciting. So make sure you subscribe, ring that bell, like this video, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, bye.